In this video, we're working on building our understanding of basic chemistry, and I stress basic chemistry, um, in relation to biology. We need to understand how things come together, at least to some degree, because later on we're going to see them come apart and get reassembled. Uh, in a previous video, you've you got a sense of the structure of atoms, and now we're going to talk about how atoms come together through what's called chemical bonding. Okay? A, a chemical bond forms, which we're, we're going to just sort of say a, a linking, we'll put that in quotes because it's not always true, of two or more atoms to form a compound. So a compound is made up of more than one atom. It's when atoms come together. Some elements, some uh, substances exist just as individual atoms, things like argon and neon and uh, things like that. Other things come together and bond, and they're familiar to you. You, you know of things like H2O, CO2. Uh, perhaps you can see a bonding. Maybe you know oxygen is O2, or you can get really fancy and have glucose, C6, H twelve O six or table salt NaCl so you can see things like that. Okay. And all of these are compounds. They are combinations of atoms that have come together. The reason atoms come together has to do with their uh, electron arrangement. So we saw uh, an atom had a nucleus and then had these rings of electrons. The nucleus has protons and neutrons and and then we have the distribution of electrons where you could have two in the in first energy level and then up to eight in the next. But what if you had uh, let's go with this. What if you that you could have eight but it only had six electrons in the outer ring. Well what that does is it makes the atom unstable. It, atoms want to reach a low stable energy state. And they're unstable when they're like this. And so what they do is they bond. They bond to fill or to have a full uh, outer, sorry, outer energy level. Okay. And they can do that two ways. You can see here, you can, they can do that through ionic bonding, and they can do that through covalent bonding. So a brief lesson on those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify how I write an atom. And this actually is oxygen right here up in the corner where I've been uh, working. And since I'm not that interested in the nucleus, and in some ways I don't care about this inner ring, I can actually write this by just writing the symbol for oxygen and then the outermost electrons. And so that's the, what I'm going to do. You can assume that inside of the electrons shown is a full energy level. So if I come over here and I look at, I'm going to take sodium. Now sodium has a few layers of energy levels, but on its outermost energy level it just has one electron. Now as we just learned, that means that sodium would be considered unstable. Right below this is a layer that is full. Now, sodium has two choices. It could gain seven more electrons around in this energy level, or it could get rid of this one and then make the inner one the full energy level. And that's actually the option it takes. It gets rid of one electron. But where's that electron going to go? Things don't just disappear. Luckily, there are other compounds such as chlorine. And chlorine's outer energy level looks like this. It has seven electrons. Below it, there is a full energy level. So chlorine's facing a similar issue where it needs to gain or lose electrons to become stable at full outer energy level. And these two work together. Well, they don't work together. A atoms aren't doing anything on purpose. Uh, they just ha do. They just happen to do this. So what happens is we have a transfer of electrons. In this case, one electron transfers from the sodium to the chlorine. Okay, what happens takes just a little bit of analysis. 
The sodium, which earlier we learned has 11 protons in a different video, that is 11 positive charges, also had an equal number of electrons. Well, that made it neutral. But now this has been reduced to 10 electrons. So what does that make sodium? It makes it positive. And we actually indicate that with a, a plus sign as a superscript. This is a positive ion. So an ion is sometimes referred to as a charged atom. Okay, so that is what we have now. Chlorine's gone through a similar transformation, except for chlorine has picked up an electron. Now, the electrons are identical. All electrons are exactly the same, but I'm going to keep it colored uh, just so you re remember that that's where it came from. Now, chlorine go had 17 protons, that's 17 positives, and 17 electrons, that's 17 negatives, but now it has 18 electrons. So it's got one extra negative charge compared to positive charge, and that becomes negative. Now, you've heard the old saying, opposites attract, and it is, in fact, the case here that the positive sodium ion is attracted to the negative chlorine ion and vice versa. These two things come right up next to each other and the, the bond here is really more of a close association so that would be the chlorine, here's the sodium. And in fact they start to arrange themselves in such a way because there'll be more of these than just one. There'll be one on this side too and one behind, I can't draw the one behind. Um, and then chlorines will surround all of the sodiums sort of like this. And I, I won't go too far with this. And I, I, if I color one in here, that'll disappear. And so it becomes a very regular crystal structure. You hear uh, about like salt crystals and, uh, and the like. And that's what that is, very regular uh, sort of ducks in a row kind of structure. Okay, so that, these are both ions. And that is called ionic bonding. And the way to remember that, or what to remember, is that there is a transfer of electrons. Okay? Electrons are given up from an atom to another atom completely. On the other side of the fence here, we have covalent bonding. And covalent bonding doesn't involve a transfer, but instead sharing of electrons. Right, and I'm going to pull my oxygen down here. Oxygen's a very good example. Oxygen has six outermost energy level electrons. Sometimes they're referred to as valence electrons. And so it needs to become stable. And the way oxygen does that is it, it can ionize, but more often it will share electrons. Over here, I can have hydrogen which only has one electron. Now in that, outer, that early, that small energy level in the middle, if you look up here, um, this can have two. So hydrogen is kind of an exception to that rule of eight. We're trying to fill with eight. And it just needs to have one more. And you can kind of see these two things. They're kind of like puzzle pieces. I'm just going to drag it. I can't drag it over. But what they can do is share. Isn't that so friendly? that this right here becomes a shared pair of electrons. This is called a covalent bond. Okay? Um, and they get counted towards hydrogen and oxygen. So at this point, the hydrogen has two electrons in its outer energy level, and the oxygen has seven. Well, that's all well and good, but oxygen needs eight. And so what if another hydrogen bonded here? Okay? And the next thing you know, there you have it. You have two H's bonded to an O. Now sometimes this gets simplified. H and the hydrogen or the excuse me, the covalent bond just gets a dash. Oxygen electrons are there. And there, and of course you have water. And that is a covalent bond where you have sharing. And you can have multiple covalent bonds. You could have a case like this where carbon and oxygen, when they make carbon dioxide, they form two bonds between each other. Okay? And 
you could actually have carbon and nitrogen. They form three bonds, and I'm not writing the other outside electrons. But just each of these dashes represents a shared pair. And so th this is one shared pair, two shared pair. There are four shared electrons between this carbon and oxygen. So that's a case of multiple bonds. Okay. Hopefully this gives you a decent understanding of bonding in chemical compounds. Um, there are some other exceptions that we'll talk about at some point about hydrogen bonds and things like that. But these are the two main types of chemical bonds. Please take some notes. Write down questions if you have any and bring them to me. Um, and we'll explore this a little together. Okay, great. Take it easy.